Um, oh, there he is. Uh, if you don't know about Meta Valley Interpretive Center, they're doing really good work. I encourage you to go to their booth, check out what they're doing. Um, Dave is also doing some really good work on the land back movement. I would encourage you to take some time to chat with him. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, here's Dave. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Couldn't have asked for, I mean afternoon. Couldn't have asked for a more beautiful day to celebrate this amazing, amazing planet that we live on, that we're a part of. So I'm going to start off with just some gratitudes and, uh, and to acknowledge the land that we're all standing on right now. And then I'm going to welcome up some elders to, uh, to do what they want to do. So I just want to give thanks for the lands and the waters, the winds and the fires, all that, we, that sustain us, all that we are a part of, all that animates our lives and allows us to laugh, allows us to cry, allows us to jump for joy, allows us to mountain bike or juggle, like my friend Rob right there loves to juggle. All of that stuff that we call our lives is because of this amazing, beautiful Mother Earth that we are standing upon. And it would not be the way it is today without the careful, the loving, and the beautiful stewardship since before time of the Methau people and their descendants. And I want to welcome them up to the stage now. So Arnold Cleveland and Mark Miller and Randy Lewis, we're honored to have you here today with us. Good afternoon, folks. I uh, want to thank the Interpretive Center for inviting myself and some of my relatives to uh, be able to be a part of the opening presentations here from everybody. And uh, just as some background information, I'm Arnold Cleveland. I'm a member of the Wenatchee tribe, and we are also affiliated with the Colville Reservation, which uh, entails 12 different tribes altogether. But family bloodlines work all the way through uh, different tribes up into Canada, down into Northern Oregon. So uh, in a lot of ways, as indigenous people, we're all related around here. And so it's kind of nice to be able to come up through this valley as I've been doing off and on over the years to see the changes that have happened and taken place and the growth and the care that all of us have given this valley in this time. The other thing is the people, the land, the animals, birds. We all enjoy music. And I believe that in past times, you know, the communication has been with music. And there's music everywhere you look, everywhere you listen to, the trees here with the wind blowing today, you hear music. And so we've come around to be able to present this music to others in all different forms, guitars, 
xylophones that we have over here. I like to do my praying with the flute. It's a native flute made by some friends down in New Mexico. But what I like to do is dedicate the evening, the afternoon, the times, and all of us and our spirits get together, irregardless of our, our bloodlines and our beliefs, personal and all. We all come together and we'll listen to music together. And uh, the nice gentleman here on the soundboard has been playing some different styles of music for us that come from a long way from here, you know, different parts of the world. But it's all music and it's all uh, it's, it's, it's just magic. And so I'd just like to do a few little short lines. And whatever your beliefs are, however you believe, wherever, whenever, take it on your own to interpret the music any way you want. But I feel that with all of our spirits come together today, we can send this message on up to our Creator and say thank you for what you have done here. Say white, white, hello and good day. Here is me, Kayahan, Randy. Randy Lewis, um, we're all related. I have family here from the mouth of the Madhow. My, <clears throat> my family, the Miller family, the, the Millers. Loop Loop Jim, the Brooks family, all from the Met How. We were here and are still here. My great grandparents were, were kind of, um, how would you say, were a very fluid people. By that I mean the Met Howes, the Okanagan, the Met Howes, the Chelans, the Met Howes, and Diats, and Diats in Pascosa, Wenatchee's, we're all directly related. And we did this, we, we married into each other's bands or into each other's tribes to give us strength of people, to give us strength of heart, but also to ensure our loyalty to each other. We looked after each other and we still look after each other. And when this area, this area belonged to Mierha people. And in the 1800s, it was set aside as the Moses Columbia Reservation. But this was without the consent or the um, cooperation of the Mierha people. They seem to have been left out of their own area. So they set this reservation up 
and quickly took it back away from us. My folks, my grandfolks, my great grandfolks, they had come up from Frenchman's Coulee, from across the, the river at Kittitas, to be a part of this. They were being allotted at the mouth of the Methow, only to find out that their reservation was being extinguished. And the people here, they weren't notified. They were just told to leave. And I mean told to leave immediately. And so they were expelled while they were eating their meals. People were just forced to leave. This, this we still hold in here. My relatives, my grandfather, Jerome Miller, whose allotment was at Aswell, he still fished up here, as well as fished on the Wenatchee, where our other, other side of our family was from. We were very mindful, and we're still to this day mindful, of the resources, of the sacred foods, of the holy medicines that were given to us, that we keep in our hearts, we return to every year to procure them, to harvest them, and to prepare them. And if you see us out here in the hills, just let us go on and continue what we do. There's been a, there's been a history of, of, oh, what do I say? Well, people don't like us on their land. They think we're up to, up to no good. All we're doing is we're just harvesting our sacred foods. So I'm going to move. I got to move on. I've, I've got some brain damage going on here. <laughs> so I, for, I, I, I tend to, the pieces of the puzzle don't all go together. Um, but I'm glad to see everybody out here. Lam Lamp, thank you. Lam Lamp, Lam Lamp, Khoyanch Oten. Thank you, thank you, God, for this day, for this land we call Mam Ompt. Say, Mam Ompt. Mam Ompt. That is the Holy Mother Earth we're talking about. Lam Lamp, thank you. Lam Lamp. Lam Lamp, Mam Ompt. Thank you, Mother Earth. My granddad used to say, used to tell me, he said, you know, you don't have to be in church. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to stand in some holy way to be mindful and to be in prayer. He used to say, any thought well-directed is in itself a prayer. So with that, I'm going to leave you with one, one song of ours. And this is from one of our relatives from Swinomish, from Laconner, Morris Dan. I asked for a drum. I got a drum with ventilation. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's a hot day, yes. Bear with me. Oh, <laughs> Mark Miller, I'm his little cousin. 
uh, we're the millers on the net how. So we're down at Pateras, that ancient land we've talked about. I'm having a hard time pulling myself together right now. <laughs> I wasn't expecting Morse Dan. Morse Dan's my mentor. So when I was in college studying medicine, I was called by Morris to study with Morris, to study the Indian way of medicine and spiritualism. It's easy for me to look at you and tell you I had the opportunity to study with a Messiah, Morris Dan. That's all. So I got ambushed by Morris today, <laughs> which is fairly common in Morris and I's relationship. So, Morse trained me to be an interpreter. And I don't speak Indian at all, much to Morse's oldest daughter's chagrin. And Morse was wasting his time as me as his pupil. And her dad would laugh at her because I don't speak Indian, but he had a lot to teach me. And the crux of that teaching was that I was the interpreter for white people understanding Indian people. The other side of that was I was the interpreter for Indian people understanding white people. And he spent a lot of time teaching me those differences. So teaching me the difference between Christianity, and Morris was a Christian, and Indian spiritualism, which has nothing to do with Christianity. I always tease my friend who's a minister about Christianity because... I always want to know how the Christians are doing because they're the newest religion. They're only a couple thousand years old. We're talking Indian spiritualism that's upwards of 13,000 years. And the differences between those are the things that Boris spent time teaching me. Right now I get to help uh, Phil Davis with Homestream Park and we tour grade school kids through there. And one of the messages I leave those kids is, how does a tree eat a salmon? And I want them to leave that day understanding how that tree eats a salmon. And I just was at Homestream last week, and the kids have spent all winter picking up salmon bones at Homestream Park. So the trees are still eating well. <laughs> so looking back at the garden project here, my grandfather had me catch fish at the mouth of the Med How, smoked it, flayed it, mixed it up with boxes of food that my grandmother put together for elder Med Howes that could no longer come to the valley to harvest fish, hunt, gather roots, gather cedar bark, gather roots, and we started in Brewster and we're going up the Okanagan delivering food. We stopped at the mouth of the Chilliwist and my grandfather's speaking to this old Indian woman and she's a Charlie. She's a mad how but winters on the Chilliwist because it's too cold to winter here. You, have, you haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> the Indians went south and east. <coughs> She quickly unwrapped this smoked fish, popped it in her mouth, start eating it, and start crying, and talking in Indian. I'm 12 years old and scared to death. I screwed the fish up somehow. <laughs> and she grabs my hand and kisses my hand and kisses me in the forehead, and I'm still in a panic. <laughs> I screwed up the fish. And my grandfather starts laughing. He says, Sonny, my grandfather had a lot of grandsons. We were all named Sonny. He says, Sonny, she's telling you, you made her spirit young again, like when she could go to the Mad How and catch her own fish and smoke it. That was the power of that food. That food came from here. It infused her spiritually. Weird concept for you, still happening. <laughs> happens to you. Happens to that garden project. So, 
within a year, that old lady died. And I felt really bad because I had a connection. And my grandfather says, Sonny, don't feel bad. She made that journey to the other side with that young spirit you gave her through that fish. That fish that came from this valley. It's kind of why Homestream Park and the Salmon Conservancy, the things I address in this valley, why they're important to me. They're kind of our barometer of how we're doing environmentally, how we're doing with one another, how we're doing with the fish, the water, the dirt, the trees, the air. All those things are interconnected. And then when you eat things here, they're spiritually interconnected inside you as well. I dare say that's probably why most of you are here today. You don't have to be Indian to be connected. It's inside you. I've talked to a lot of you. And that's why you're here. There's a lot of people in this valley that came here and got captured spiritually. And that's why they stayed. I've had people tell me the trees talk to them, the river talk to them, the mountains talk to them, the rocks talk to them. There's all this spiritual entity for all these different things here. And you're part of that. It's part of you. It's part of what you're going to take when you pass. It's part of what you're going to leave to your offspring and your grandchildren. That's kind of what's exciting about having the opportunity to talk to you today. Because you're all kind of in a like-minded. And I think of you more as Indian people than white people. You're welcome. <laughs> Not long ago, as Randy said, Indian people weren't really welcome in this valley. And that's changed a lot in 20 years. And, and that's, a good, that's a good feeling from this side. So I kind of wanted you to think about the dirt, because you're part of that dirt, part of the food part of the water, part of the air, that sunshine. Today is really a celebration of dirt. You're part of that dirt. It's that simple. You're taking care of the dirt. With that in mind, I want to give you a message that Morris had me deliver at his daughter's funeral. Because Morris wasn't available to speak, he told me what to say or what he wanted delivered. So, Indian people always talk about the teachings, these rituals. You see Indians doing things and putting their hands in the air and doing this, me sprinkling t tobacco offerings to our ancestors. And you're kind of wondering what's going on. And why are these things so secret? And they're really not secret. Because how we preserve those teachings is to repeat them. Wow. When you repeat it, everybody knows it. That's how you save them. The good things you're doing today, the good things with these projects, and... The things I studied is value. The things that you're doing, you just need to teach them. Say them out loud, and they're saved. One of the funnest things I do is go to Homestream with a group of fifth and sixth grade kids and talk to them about how a tree eats a fish, how your gardens feed you, how this valley spiritualism feeds all of us. So I'm rambling on too long, so I'm going to shut up. I really prayed this morning at sunrise, because that's when I pray. That's what my grandfather taught me to. Was they, the people that came here today would come here with a good heart, because that's important. And I want you to leave today with a better heart. 
thank you for your time. I'm not sure I can actually say anything. I think I'm just going to cry. That was, whew, that was powerful. And I want to thank Mark and Arnold and Randy. Thank you guys. My heart to yours. And I want to thank John Doran too, who I think is going to be up next. Thank you, John, for welcoming us here today. It's happening. You guys, you got to realize how much work all these people behind the scenes do so that we can just be idiots here and enjoy ourselves. So you need to thank all the workers. But I also want you to know that I've really appreciated you guys thanking me coming up and acknowledging that I'm opening up my little teeny piece of this paradise called Earth. But I want to thank you because by you people showing up, you are allowing me to continue my parents' legacy. When I was six years old and we first came here and bought the ranch, one of the first chores I did with my father was we started over in the corner of the ranch over there and we went up the half mile of the fence that direction the two miles of the fence that direction, the mile, the three quarters of a mile back this way and back. I was six years old and I said, Dad, what are we doing? And he was tearing down the no trespassing signs and putting up signs that said, use with permission and our phone number. And I said, Daddy, this is our land. You worked hard to get it. Why are we doing this? And he said, it's not our land. We occupy the land for a very short time we are the stewards and if we cannot share this with our other beings we do not deserve to own it and i was six years old and that is why you're here this very day every year i remember my parents share share with the people we don't own it so i my father passed away, and I had this piece of ground, and we, our family, my family, bought the ranch in 58, and it goes from way over there to way up there two miles up to the, the ground. And so these hills behind me, the trees, the sagebrush, the rocks, that was my playground. That was where I was educated. That's where I wanted to be. When I got out of school and day, I wanted to be on the hills. I wanted to be with the dirt. So I, w I live in the barn upstairs, and I was asleep there one night, and I woke up. I was having a dream of my father. And he said, the sons and daughters yet unborn to sons and daughters are waiting for their turn. And I thought, wow, Dad. I woke up. I wrote those lines down because I thought they were meaningful. And I wound up not being able to go back to sleep. And so I wrote this poem, and it's called Cry the Home Ranch. But it's a cry of Mother Earth for all the ground. Though I wrote it with this little ground behind us, but it is relevant for all of Mother Earth. So don't I apologize for the cheat sheets, but I'm getting old. <laughs> Well, Dad's been gone nigh on three years. Mom was 80 in the spring. The house has seen a, a hundred summers come and go and a thousand voices laugh and sing. And now the torch, it has moved on. Young hands moving up to meet the task. Sweet rain still bathes this burdened land like it did a thousand years in the past. The sentinel pine, high on the distant hill where the ashes years ago were strewn, will keep her vigil in the sun and hot, the pale dark or pale moon. The land, it has a spirit. We've all rode headlong racing across her face, and we 
felt the sun bounce off rocks and sage as we set a breakneck pace. But we're grown now, and our strengths may have waned as we pursued our private schemes and chased the gods of enterprise, building families, fortunes, homes, and dreams. But still the land, she calls us back. She says, she beckons, tread on me light. I'm your mother earth. I have wept and bled, but I'm still here now, hear my plight. And though the cattle scarcely graze my hills and the homestead sights are fading fast, I'm still alive. I'm still here. I'm the next generation's future. I'm your past. Don't turn your back. Don't walk away. I'm not some old lover used and cast aside. I'm rebirth and spring. I'm summer's sweet growth. I'm fall's colored petticoats and then winter tide. The roots run deep. Just look at me. I'm, yes, I'm scarred, but my heart still fairly burns. The sons and daughters, yet unborn to sons and daughters, are waiting for their turns. See, we are the custodians. We're the keepers of the past. Our decisions will reign for years to come. Do we turn our backs and walk away? Can our actions equal out the final sum? Well, I don't know. But I'll saddle up and I'll ride my pony down that distant ridge and I'll talk with God as the sun throws shafts of light across the pearl gray clouds that bridge. And as ranches die, the cattle herds moved off. The cowboy and his horse left in the past. Are we a better land for the loss of this way? Will anything we build now last? Some measure life in deeds they've done. Money earned or put away material things that lose their wealth when measured up on judgment day, but run the soil through your hands. Look at the sage and bunch grass growing free. The land will outlive all of time. True wealth for generations yet to be. To unborn children, the future's hope, the answer mankind will survive. This gift we have and we can freely give and validate our lives. God bless. Thank you. Our next artist is an indigenous artist from the Penticton Indian Band and the Nooksack Indian Tribe. He is inspired by native traditions, pop culture, the Bible, legends, and fables. He has been featured in Wenatchee World, Good Life Magazine, Shrub Step Poetry Journal, and on Fearless Radio 96.3 from Wenatchee. See Wilkin, Jimmy. This piece is called Surviving the Game. Papers, the radio, the magazine, people still trying to figure out how. Silver screen, how I made my dreams become reality. Killing the game, fatality. Y'all run it around like Uncle Fester. Trying to make a million dollars on a Wednesday. Shows from Saturday, got away to Tuesday. Got a couple slim things called to my groupies. Living my life just like a movie. Flow so dope that it bubbles in a spoon. Don't feel safe, no lie to the room. Reside in a state that I leech in a dome. Secret say contact, should be Kenneth's tomb. Over the head, and not send it consume. Like a heroin balloon. In the bed, get a bad bone. In a pontoon, in the middle of the monsoon, people used to say. I need to change my ways, so I'm changing everything. Now they're starting all to say, I don't like the person you became. So I made a couple songs, got a whole lot of clout. Now everybody's asking how I'm dealing with the fame. All I can say is that I'll never be the same. Broke, keep your balls to survive the game. Money's coming in and it started to look good. Something like a gentrified neighborhood where we buy the block back. You must have had me misunderstood. There's so many people, including me, that are desperate. End up to no good. There were so many people look just like me that are depressed. End up to no good. So watch when you walk in my neighborhood. We got a different type of neighborhood. Watch. A lot of people really want to hate on me. Never let them get too close. Call them the crazies. Get a little clout. Now everybody want to work. Wow, crazy. Doesn't that amaze me? Come up with the drugs, jewelry, money, funny. Call me Mr. Lifeguard Rick. Now everybody else just riding away. In the middle of the night, I paved my own way. I pray. 
prayed so many days, but I've never been saved. I prayed to the Lord and never been saved. So I danced with the devil, then I broke his neck because my demons wouldn't show me any respect. Call me Mr. Reaper because I come to collect. So many lines have got upset. He still dashed me up and that shows respect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this piece is called Heart of the King. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I guess I'm not good enough for you. Well, I'm gonna take the world and I'm coming for you. I'm gonna change everything, including of you. You better pray to God, that's all that I do. 33 kids that I prophesied. Now it's time to rise all above the lies. But if you really want to battle, last thing you hear is gonna be a war cry. I was born to rise and I'm gonna take all of you with me. That's the Kamakazi, the Namasaki, the spectator sport, cause I can do what's watch me. God is the only one that can stop me. That's exactly one everyone left me. Now the die of Father the Trinity. My name is written in infinity. Landscape architect, I'm moving these mountains. I give you my truth, my fountain of views. All of my life, drug abuse, and I found God, he lit the fuse. But if you really want to live a life like mine, let alone hair walk in my shoes, spent a lifetime praying to God, learning my lessons and paying my dues. Now it seems that I'm up to kill, but I still have a no clue on what to do, on what to do. So if you really want to live a life like mine, let alone Walk in my shoes, spent a lifetime praying to God, learning my lessons and paying my dues. Now it seems that I'm up the queue, but I still have a no clue on what to do, on what to do, on what to do. So it's questions, questions, no explanations, man, put it on my life, no destination. What they didn't know was the heart of the king was hidden on the reservation. Smuggled down by the gate of 12, hunted down by the demons from hell. Redeemer of the angels that fell, he's got a silver tongue, but you could never tell. So intoxicating, you thought it was a spell. Reads the Bible to get a little help from Jesus. He's a, one of the strongest believers in the Lamborghini to see the crisis. My back, no need for a heater. Broke the system, they called me a cheater. Denied his name more times than Peter. For some reason, they still made me the leader. Yeah. This place, this piece is my last piece, and it's called Gunna. Snow on the ground, ice in my veins, sky was red before the darkness. I was left alone with my hardships, death's the world that are heartless. All alone, but I couldn't complain. Every day they looked the other way, so I prayed for rain. The storm begins, that's exactly what the lightning cracked. That's when I knew that God had my back. Shields up with a sword in my hand. Guess what? There's no turning back. This is the return of the Mac. 92, shack attack. That's when they heard the click clack. Give me the bag, I'm taking your stacks. Going in like it's Iraq. Doing numbers like a matchbook. Apple pie, that's a MacBook. Stove top, it's time to cook. I'm just a crook, they threw the book. And guess what? I left them all shook like a Mad Max. I'm a madman. Before I'm gone, I'll leave an impact. You're misunderstood. I'm an empath. So many things you will surpass. Half of the people can't even grasp. Last to first and the first to last. We make mistakes. Stop living in the past. Wait to see the things are on fold. Flame is hot. The dark is so cold. Fuses lay. I'm about to explode. Manifested all of my goals. Levitate with my eyes closed. Path led trouble. The road that I chose. Eyes glow when I start to fall. Kill a man with just a bow. So heck, John Favreau, bro. MCU stacking that dough. Since the six, so many foes. You understand there was no way home. This is Attack of the Clones. Padme, you've been overthrown. This is a glimpse of unknown. Pray to God you're not all alone. King Arthur, sword in the stone. Terminator, I'm bad at the bone. Change reality with just a phone. Talking to me, better watch your tone. These are not the drones you're looking for. Key maker, open elevator doors. You have yet to take my final form. All your instincts, you've been warned. Super soldier, I'm Jason Bourne. Son of God, that's a crown of thorns. Old school like Vince Vaughn. Autobots, let's transform. You've been so misinformed. Fake facts will be ignored. Ignorance, the new norm. We need police reform. Form, they break the law, take the uniform. I'm coyote in human form, Jedi in its newest form. I'm one with the force to force with me. I'll show you things you can't understand in hopes it makes your mind expand. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Yeah.